Good morning, SEO Nation, and welcome back to Dark Marketing. In this video, I'm going to go over GSA Search Engine Indexer and the com companion product, GSA URL Redirect Pro. And I want to put this in a standalone video because a few people were asking me recently uh, about if I have a video on it, and I know I covered it in one of the videos, and uh, you know I can't even remember which which video I covered it in. So this really should have a little standalone topic, and this is a good time for us to review because from time to time my recommendations about certain settings may change, things like that. So it's always good to stay current, and this is a good place to do this video before some of the next upcoming videos which I'm going to be doing in SEO from the ground up where we're going to take a look at how to get your pages marked up for SEO and then we're going to also do a video we've got coming up on GSA search engine ranker going to be a big one and that's the other place where GSA search engine indexer comes into play but generally I run it as a standalone product and that is what we're going to go through today we're going to talk about standalone setup and scenarios so this is dark marketing I'm your host Big Dom let's get started all right let's see what's going to happen when we start these up because I run these standalone always start these softwares by running as administrator see and what I do is I watch for it you want to pay attention don't move off to the next machine because ah see the previous thing that didn't complete wants to restart and if you don't hit that do not load bada bing bada boom it'll fire off and start trying to run again and we don't want that because we're starting with a fresh scenario but it's good that I point that out because you know it becomes a little trip up for you, you get the thing to stop and you got to stop the program and then restart it again and pay attention same thing on this one you're gonna have two say no to both we're ready to go and I'm updated so there are two key things about how these softwares work together this is going to take your URL and shorten it and wrap it with keyword phrases as anchor text because basically what GSA search engine indexer does is going to go out and post your link to a huge array of resources where it's going to get picked up quickly but those sources can vary and so is the approach the quantity of URLs and phrases that we're going to put in now in my particular case there's there's a couple different ways you can work this there are times when you may just want to index a single page and you're going to put a single URL in here and my suggestion with that is just put a single a single keyword phrase in here to run for a single URL like you've updated a page or you've uh, made a new blog post and you just want to index that single page that's that simple approach but before we get there we're gonna to have to take a look at some of the basic things of setup again just so everyone has a good idea so one of the first things we're gonna to need to do is configure our indexer which is simply a matter of checking the box that this is talking to GSA URL redirect pro over here and likewise over here we want to configure indexer and have the same thing see that and that's all we really need to make sure is set as far as those go for the moment then let's take a look at our proxy configuration we've gone over this several times before with other versions of GSA but they're all the same but we'll cover it again so everybody gets a, a fresh look at the configuring the proxies now just a little FYI here guys you know this week I decided to run a few tests to see if I get any kind of a different result by putting paid proxies in versus free proxies and I can tell you I I didn't so and these are all paid proxies that were in here from the last test so that being said we're going to take this like a fresh setup select options search for new proxies a lot of times you know for most people the defaults are okay sometimes I change this to a thousand you know it all depends because it, it's going to run more uh, if it's going to search when you have less than a thousand but that's okay we want to check our public proxies get checked 
test, retest. We want this system testing. All of most of these defaults are going to be fine. And threads, I like to kick this up a little bit for the proxies. And likewise, going to do the same thing over here. So configure proxies. I'm going to delete all of these. I'm going to go to my options. Check search. 1,000. Public proxies. And I'm going to give this 50. Okay. Now, that's our basic thing. These are ready to run. Now, the reason I want to go with the free proxies is because these resources that this is making these little micro posts for are not going to block us because of IPs unless we're just, you know, running a ton of things all coming from the same IP. Whereas, by, but, the, but, you know, using free scrape proxies, even if they've been banned or something, these are going to go through. I, I did some significant testing over the last two weeks because, you know, it occurred to me, I go, well, I never use paid proxies with this and I never had an issue, but I just decided to, you know, give it a test. Was I going to see some better, you know, indexing result? I did not, okay? So, that being said, let's take a look at some of the other things to set up here. Now, there are basically three ways you're going to be running this software in a general sense, where you're just going to do a single URL, which you would paste in here, okay? You would just paste your URL in, and any keywords. So, let's just say, you know, I just wanted to target what my main root phrase is, my heading one tag at the top of the page, I put it in here. If I want to do three uh, phrases, just comma separated. This is just single action. There's no need for extra files. And what you're going to want to do with this, when you do do that, is you don't want to be in custom indexer mode. And you don't want to use only sites that can index deep links. We'll talk about that in a second. What we want is we want full indexer mode. We want to get the maximum because we just would be doing a single URL. Understand? But the thing to understand is that when you're in full indexer mode and you do a single URL, you may make as many as, uh, it may complete with as many as 10,000, 10,500 submissions. Okay? And... So understanding that when you, look, when you add this URL in, it's going to index it as is. And then it's going to take each phrase and it's going to run it again with each one of those phrases. Now, uh, you know, wrapping it in anchor text and making it a short link, etc. But I want you to understand the multiples because now you're going to have one times three if I use three phrases really four because it's going to do the main URL first because it just seems to be a default function when you paste a URL into here I've noted that it always indexes the URL first followed by the short URLs wrapping so you're going to get multiples okay and I want you to think about that a little bit because these are short-term backlinks that actually can have an impact on your SEO at a low level okay and, but thinking about the multiples is really important here because the other two ways you're really going to be using these software is the more uh, significant and one that's going to require a little thought and how you're going to manage your settings. If you're going to be using GSA Search Engine Ranker, that is one thing where you're going to connect it with that software and it's going to run from there. And how you're going to do your configurations is going to be really kind of based on how you're doing your GSA software. If you're you're running at high rates, a lot of posting, you're going to want to, you know, you're going to want to do something different when it comes to GSA index or tone it down a little bit to counterbalance. On the other hand, if you're running it very slow, the GSA search engine ranker where you're just trying to get 50 high quality, high scoring ranking links in a week where you're doing your own crawler or even in a month then you know you can run the indexer full on you know with with the maximum settings to get the maximum result because what I want to do is share a little secret with you of things that I've done 
But the number one way, you really want to use it in the context of using these other softwares that you want to get your index link, whether you're using RankerX or Money Robot. So let's just take a look at that, okay? So here's my Money Robot, and I've got campaigns. And when I complete a campaign, I can go over here, and here's my URLs. And we see all our URLs, and we see the profile links too. See that? So here's what I like to do. I select all, I copy them, what I want to do is I want to get them out of here and get them prepped for a nice indexing run. So I not only want to get them indexed, but I want to give them some extra juice in the process. Now this can be extremely powerful when you're doing it for your backlinks, but I want to stop right here and put it in to a, a different context where instead of running these backlinks, let's just say I want to just do a half a dozen pages that all are governed around the same topic. Okay, let me see if I can really make this clear. Normally, when I run a campaign with Money Robot, the number of backlinks in the campaign usually has about a dozen or more, maybe 16, somewhere in that range. And all of the pages that are being backlinked for, to, you know, we use a group of keywords. The same keywords that I'm using for the anchor text in those actual postings that were created here, the same keywords we're going to want to use in our indexing. So when I take that list, okay, that list is going to have a lot of these also profile links. I remove those profile links. So basically, I've just got a list with the links, and all of these links the title of the document is the link so they all revolve around the same subject matter and of course this is for one of my clients low-level posting he has a very prominent baking blog site does fantastic fantastic numbers and this is an approach that puts some really good link juice behind the actual backlink process so let me just stop for a second and share a little thing that i've been doing a lot Rather than sometimes doing a lot of indexing, I'm running a lot more low-level campaigns with Money Robot and just letting them index naturally and gauging that out over time, over the weeks, the impact of that. And it can be very powerful without any indexing, but you're going to be running Ro Money Robot a lot more, making more backlinks, and you're going to need a bigger range of, of posts, even though you may be backlinking the same resources multiple times. So, you know, this allows you to run a campaign, you know, to, to sort of, you know, twist out of a single campaign several good runs before you, you know, uh, change up the content more. And of course, each run should be changed up to a degree. But that being said, I want you to understand the, the sort of the metrics behind it and what we're going to try to do with this because Look, if we just want to get our pages indexed, we'll keep our numbers down. But when you look at this file, let's just look. After I removed all the profiles, because it was probably over 9,000 in here, now, look, I'm down to, from this particular campaign, which was probably a smaller diagram, I got 3,365. 3,365, right? So now, what I want to do is I'm going to load multiple URLs. And you can either select add or import. Same thing, you know, when you do it from a file, it's gonna be the same thing. And what we're looking for here is this one, backlinks, okay? And I don't wanna start that yet. Let me minimize this. And now likewise, over here, what I'm gonna want are my keywords for this. And you can see how to bake bread, Bake bread, baking bread, making bread, you know, there's a whole little range here. But remember, for each one of these phrases, okay, times the number of URLs. It's not a big list here, okay, times this number of URLs, you're going to get into the millions, literally. If you get 10,000 indexings, say, per post, times, just say, times 3,500, right there, you're talking about 
3.5, no, sorry, 35 million, or, or is it 3.5 million? But, but that's what some of these runs are going to go up to. And then when you add another multiple, it's going to make one for every phrase. You can see how this is going to really take on a lot of action speed-wise. And that's why, like, we'll have to go, let's get back here. Number of threads. I like to run like 200 threads with this because I'm setting these to run. This, in fact, you know, it, now, just so you understand, I will change these up. I may run 100 on one, 200 on the other. It depends on if my keywords uh, list is shorter and my URL list is longer or vice versa. If I'm running a short URL list, sometimes, sometimes I've only got 20, 30 URLs in a list. And you can also bust your list up. You don't have to put that whole list in at a time. You could take 500 URLs, wrap it with your phrases, load it up, and go. And what I want you to understand that I'll let this baby run for days. So I'll do a campaign for a client where, uh, like, a, we'll, we'll take a look at that. I probably have some really good results showing up on some external tracking. But how I use this, not only just to not only get index, but to supplement the SEO, okay, process. Well, I really need to, 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 to boost things around a group of pages that I'm backlinking. Okay, let's just take a quick look here. Because, look, when you select quick indexer mode, you're going to get a lower number. It's just going to give you what it thinks is the minimal requirement. And I don't know what that number is, generally. I almost never use that. Custom indexer mode, you know, generally this is by default is set at 800. But if I want to, if, I'm, if I want to cut it down, I'll set this to 1,000. That's my number that I say, hey, I don't want 10,000 if it's got that many. I just want 1,000, okay? Another thing is, Use only sites that can index deep links. Well, when we're doing backlinks, especially like from a money robot, which is going to make very low uh, rated links to start, they're not necessarily going to get indexed. However, think, think beyond for a minute in the fact that it doesn't matter. When you're trying to do this, not just for the indexing purposes, but now to use this as an SEO boosting tool for the phrases that we are working in our documents, in our campaign, and right down to the list in this system here. So I like to not use this. I want it to in post for in all the places, whether... When it gets picked up or not, that it's going to index it because it's not a deep indexing link, I don't care. You know why? Because that short-term post is still going to be a backlink wrapped in anchor text with my keyword. Understand? Now, in the grand scheme of things, it may not seem like much. It's just a little because these things don't have a long lifespan. However, let's start running here. Let me run. Start. Sometimes I just click that start. This will kick in after this is taking its first lead. There we go. You see? It's already starting its process. And you can see as it's going to run down and we've got the timer bar, this is just the first one that's going to happen. So let's give this a second so that everything kicks in and starts going. Okay, and now we're running. Oh, look, another update just came out. Because I literally just updated both of these applications this morning before I began this video. But that's okay. An update comes out. I just let it stay running. But look at that. Look at that baby screaming away. See that? And that's all this thing is going to do. Because what I want you to understand with this approach of what I'm doing here right now, this is going to really drive a lot of keyword ranking to the ultimate end source we are indexing these backlinks, but we are doing it in a way that is the same mechanic that we are taking at every step that when we're doing our backlinking campaigns. We're using anchor text to wrap the link into, and these little micro posts 
that are going to be indexed and they're going to add value and drive up. Now in this particular campaign, this was a tight one. It only had about three backlinks in it. Generally, a lot of the ones I do with Money Robot, they're low level. Because they're such a low level and I use 12 to 16 generally in that range of links that will be contained for backlinking, they get very diversified. But all of the backlinks in that campaign relate to the keywords or the keywords have a relationship to those particular pages. So I'm working a group of keywords with a group of pages, plenty of crossover, bada bing, bada boom, and they've got their backlinks. So now we are backlinking our backlinks in this indexing process with those keywords. And this is why it's good to have multiple systems. Why once you start getting going with these processes, you know, how I've outlined in other videos, you want to build like a four stack where you've got four systems you switch between. You may do your backlinking on one, you want to do your indexing on the other. But this, what I'm showing you right here, this is a very powerful weapon. Now, everything that we do happens in the context of time. So like if I've got a new client and I start doing backlinking for them, I do a lot of backlinking early on and very little indexing. And I allow those large quantities of low-level backlinks to get indexed naturally. So they start to kind of bubble up on their own and I'm seeing the numbers on my HREFs. Now, this is that client's three-month overview of backlinks. And you can see back in July we had our backlinks were climbing dramatically as well as lost backlinks. So there was, you know, quite a bit of balance kind of going on there. But as we started to recently see more, more drops than increases. So now what do I want to do when that starts to happen? That's when I want to run this process, which I'm doing right here, which is to index those backlinks with keywords. Now, this particular thing will run for two weeks if I let it. Because why? Talking about 3,500 links. Let me just pull my calculator out. Because So if I'm just doing, let's say, 3,500 links, and let's say I get, let's say I just only get 5,000 indexings as opposed to 10,000, even though we're in full indexing mode. Right there. That's 17.5 million, okay? I'm not going to, a lot of the times the multiples for me work out around 40 million. And of course, I've got this in full indexer mode. It's never, never in this lifetime going to get all of those out there posted. But just think about what's happening right now at these super high rates. Thousands, thousands of links are being created at a low level micro post for indexings with the keywords. Now, remember guys, Google is not the only search engine. Yahoo, Bing, well over a hundred other resources and crawling services. But remember, the big players, the, the companies that are really behind HREFs, Google, Bing, Yahoo, they're not a single website. There are thousands of servers working in unison, cascading around the world thousands of times a day because what makes Google the leader? Google's the leader because of its ability to crawl data and to glean data from lower levels that it's not presenting. But it is the king of sifting and sorting. And while all of this is going on, think of it like a like a stadium when the people do the wave and you see this a cascading wave. Well, that is what we are doing with this. By keeping this process going for several days, sometimes for my good SEO clients, I may let this run like five days a whole week until either the system crashes or I just say that's enough. I'm never going to hit the 40 million mark, but it doesn't matter. I've got these thousands of posts that are just non-stop being fed out there and they're always available every time some system, whether it's a Google crawler or from some other search engine or resource, hits one of these resources to pick up the links for indexing, 
we are there. We are there and we are there with those keywords. And you know, it may not always be the same keyword, but it's in the zone. So there's a little bit of a randomizing process. Think of it in the casino math. It's kind of like putting a coin in every one arm bandit in Las Vegas at the same time and pulling the arms. But not just Las Vegas, every other gambling hotspot in the world. Atlantic City, boom, 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 boom. Those arms are all firing. And every time, every time that something comes, there's a chance we're going to hit the winner. And this builds a sort of a ranking factor. Now, I know the science of this works, and I can see enough through the experience, like for my clients that I just provide backlinking services for. And in some cases, I share their Google Analytics and other things, but my premium SEO clients, I do a different type of tracking where I can really hone in on the specific results and see the actual specific keywords in greater detail. Let's take a look. I think I probably covered this before in a video because on another system right now, for one of my high-end clients, I'm running for some things to drive his ranking up for a certain range of phrases. He's got a broad range, but in this certain market share that's highly competitive. Let's just take a quick look at that. I want to pull it up. Now, here's the numbers for backlinking from my SEO client, and I handle the whole show for them, internal markup. But all of that aside, you see, we've got a lot of gains versus not a lot of loss so you learn to temper your results you know with this and I haven't done a lot of indexing but I in the more deeper tracking that I have with this because my premium clients I set up extensive keyword tracking list and this client tracks almost 800 phrases but a big market share of their work happens to be in test chambers although it's not the main uh, for them, it's actually the test chamber is actually the accessory, but it's an important phrase because it taps into a market that doesn't understand the main system and naturally just searches for a chamber. So these phrases are extremely valuable. And many of these phrases, they don't have high search volume, which makes them that much more valuable. And these are all the ones when I filter out chambers and take a look, you'll see I'm running the same process that I just showed with the indexer, the GSA search engine indexer. And what I had was a backlinking campaign, which focuses around an array of various test chamber pages that he has. And I am now indexing the backlinks, just like I outlined for the bakery client. His is a blog site. The main client, they have blogs, but it is the main thing. It's, it's products. And they, their products service semiconductor industry, telecommunications, aerospace defense, sensors, automotive electronics, just to name a few. It's very broad application base, which is what makes it such a difficult product to market, and even just to market in certain segments. So we're already seeing that, look, these big jumps, these are big indicators. When I go from to number one, but increased 14 places, to number two, but increase 15 places, eight, 12. So I'm starting to see the upward movement and I'll see bigger numbers yet in the coming days as I will let that system run. That's just constantly feeding that, those little soft backlinks for indexing because they don't have a long lifespan. But if you're just running this system dedicated for a couple days for backlinks that you, the, the backlinked, the actual post that you want indexed that actually contain the backlinks to your site, just like I'm outlining here, showing you the money robot, but it doesn't matter which software you're using. And that's why I like to take the backlinks out myself and control the process. Because look, you look at these numbers, you know, that is, that is only the number. It, yes, it's good to have a high number, but it, when I don't see enough fall off sometimes to match, I can get a little concerned and so I don't want to over push it and so I have so have to look at the bigger metrics having a lot of backlinks sometimes does not necessarily guarantee every time that everything that I have to promote in its diversity for this client is going to work so I have to have to learn how to develop a strategy over time where you know I'm constantly working a cycle around of different things so by the time 
something might start to have a little ill effect with Google or other search engines, the, the next wave is already started and interacting and building that process, that process that's really happening here. At the end of the day, the final thing that I'm doing in all of this with these backlinking is with these tools right here. Now, like I said, there are times when I do not do indexing. I just do a lot of heavy backlinking, lay down a very heavy base, and let things start to happen on their own. And then I can take small groups of backlinks a little bit at a time and run them through the index. So I don't have to do these high volume runs. And in fact, I guarantee you, you just put you just put 25 or 50 URLs in here with a nice keyword list, and you'll find yourself running for quite a while, okay? More than a day. You wanna just let these babies run. But it works best when you can really diversify this process. This is not gonna work well if you just try to do this, you know, that these are links that just backlink to like two or three pages, you know, it's, uh, you're not gonna have the right metric. And that that is part of the key. When you're working in smaller groups, Look, if you just got a couple pages, then you're just, you're going to, what you want to do is use a smaller group of URLs and a, or a smaller group of phrases for the indexing. Test, test a little bit at a time. Run, run a, 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 an indexing campaign for a day and shut it off and watch. It's a patience game. You got to learn to develop the sense of timing. It's kind of like watching the stock market. So when you're analyzing your backlinks, you know, it's not just about that these have number. Those backlinks have to have value that translates into keyword ranking. Because these keywords, that's what all those documents are about that the backlinks are pointing to. And that's what all the articles that are contained that were created in those campaigns, whether they be Money Robot, GSA, Ranker X, SEO Autopilot. Okay, I take those URLs. And this is how I track the final result, by searching, filtering my keyword responses. Because just like I outlined in the other videos, we're going to take those keywords. You're doing just a simple money robot thing. You're going to take those keywords. That's what you're going to put for your anchor text, right? We're following that pattern. We're keeping that connection of those anchor texts from the, from the indexing process to the backlink article post right up to the page that it's ultimately building the rank for. And that is what Google and all these other guys, when they're doing their mega crawling of resources out there, it's a never ending process. So when you can connect this, and that's what really makes can make GSA a very powerful tool in the sense that you can sort of keep this process alive and really drive up a lot of keyword and page ranking. Now, as I pointed out, in this campaign for this client, this was, there's only a few, uh, in, in these posts that were created that I'm indexing right now, they only had a small number of backlinks because they were focused around a couple of new blog articles that he created. However, after just talking to him recently, he had said to me, oh yeah, Google just ate that stuff up because... Um, my backlinking clients, I don't do their stuff, but I, I definitely coach them, and he followed some really good guidelines that I gave him. So he had a little bit of a rocky road for a couple of months trying to bust out of, uh, he was using Ezoic, and then he got into another platform and got him onto a CDN, and just some things I did in analysis that he gave me access, and now his revenues are up 2.5 times. And I told him, listen, just stick with your original photos because that's a big thing and he said he, he was like holy mackerel because he saw that he was seeing it come up in his search results and this is that actual campaign that drove those pages up in his action because he's got a really good base of content to work with so i don't have to be afraid now that i've got him in a very competitive backlinking uh statistic I don't have to be afraid to, to run things a little more liberally. The bigger you are, the more you're going to be able to run these things and circle around and keep your content alive. Now guys, what I have given you in this video isn't just a refresh and guidelines for GSA Search Engine Ranker, which by the way, we're going to talk about that more in my next video as we go into sort of a ground up SEO markup approach. And 
when we get into the following video should be, I hope, GSA Search Engine Ranker. And then we'll talk about it again in the context of running that with GSA Search Engine Ranker and the whole caliphony of, you know, capture breakers and what have you. That being said, what you've really seen here, for those of you that have the content and for, you know, the backlinking approach, you really see how to get that keyword ranking metric established here. Now, like everything, you have to temper it to the size of your content and and the quality must be there. I can't emphasize this enough, guys. The content of your post, even if it's money robot, must be high quality. Take a good, solid approach in how you create your content. Don't just use the wizards. That will not get you any result except something negative or adverse if you're if you're unlucky. At best, you'll get nothing out of it and just waste all of your time. But when you do things the right way, solid content, you know, updating blogs, backlinking, indexing, and with this whole keyword approach, what I just showed you in here, that's a gold mine. You can really drive up results on a range of pages by just letting that baby run for, you know, a couple of good days at high rates where it's just running you know, wrapping anchor text. But remember, all of the metrics that are involved, all of the multiples, you know, do you get the feel of things? Work with pieces of the list. You can divide your URL up list. You don't have to put 3,000 in at a time. Take the first 500. Start with a few phrases. Work your way up. Feel out the metrics. Watch your analytics. Check your HREFs or what your Google Analytics and any other tracking that you utilize. You know, if you've got a big site, I'm sure you might be for those of you that are advanced, using more advanced products to track, you know, your, integrate your analytics, put your keywords in, get more direct tracking like I do for more of my premium clients. That being said, guys, that's it for today. Looking forward to the next video. Hope to knock off a few over the next several days on a range of topics. Lots of SEO stuff that we really need to talk about because at the end of the day, you know, SEO is a broad term, but when we want to talk about it from inside your website and blog content and how to really, that's the starting point. That's what we really need to start talking about and how all of this kind of comes together at every stage. And what I think I don't really, you know, I, I don't want to forget about this is about tiering. I've said it before in other videos, don't get caught up in all this. How do I do tiered strategies from one campaign to the other? The only place I see that suitable or product for the most part, is Ranker X. GSA too, but you have to do it where you're running several campaigns at once. I, I That's a complex topic, but just stick to the tiering that is inside a single campaign. When you do at Ranker X, if you're connecting campaigns and tiering them together, that's okay, because those campaigns are smaller in quantity, and you can run more of them then, and you're going to be able to create a you know, a more tiered structure going up potentially in a shorter period of time, but it doesn't pay in the sense that these things only have a limited lifespan, guys. What you're doing today is not going to be good for several months down the road. You know, you want to, Google is a fat cat for what's new. What's, your backlinking should be related to your new things, your new stuff, the changes, you know, you're constantly, even static web pages, they should be being updated. So there's always sort of, you know, change that Google and search engines see that these sites are active and they're not static and that everything's changing. They have blog content, their physical content gets altered from time to time, even if it's just small, doesn't matter. And a lot of that, that hidden content, which I'm going to talk about, really show you guys some like, some really good stuff for your SEO with your websites and blogs. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, don't forget to give us a like and to follow us if you want to see more great content like this. And remember to leave your question and uh, any questions you got and comments that you want to share below in the comments. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.